Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of the major stories tonight. Prominent Igbo leaders demand unconditional release of indigenous people of Biafra leader Namdi Kano. Senate makes a strong statement against xenophobia, condemns attacks on Nigerians in South Africa. A ray of hope for the acting Chief Justice of the Federation faces Senate screening tomorrow. And Nigeria's Amina Mohammed resumes at the United Nations as Deputy Secretary General. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our websites, channelstv.com and youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device, log on to m.channelstv.com. Or you can download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. A quick reminder here that having the Channels TV and Channel 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature, so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Ali Modu Sharif, has officially resumed work at the National Secretariat of the Party. Addressing the Imo State PDP delegation who paid him a visit, Senator Sharif said the party is in its current leadership mess because of the imposition of candidates against the people's wishes. He gave the assurance that he will return the party to the people, while the leader of the delegation, Senator Hope Uzodimma, pledged to mobilize the support of party members from the region. Well, there seems to be a crack in the Kaduna State chapter of the People's Democratic Party as its members in the state uh, seem to be divided on who to support between the national chairman, Ali Modu Sharif, and the Ahmed McCarthy-led National Caretaker Committee. While members of the state's working committee have unanimously declared their support for McCarthy, describing the appeal court judgments that restated Senator Sharif as a mis miscarriage of justice, Another group, led by Senator Musa Bello, insists that Sharif remains the authentic chairman of the party. What's going on here? It's a meeting of PDP Working Committee and other participants at the party secretariat in Kaduna. The core of the gathering is the appeal court ruling by reinstated Senator Ali Modu Sharif as national chairman of the party. A ruling they described as a miscarriage of justice while pledging their loyalty to the McCarthy led Ketika Committee. We support the position of the PDP stakeholders at the national level that the National Convention of the Party held in Port Harcourt on the 21st of May 2016 actually dissolved the then National Working Committee. And the National Executive Committee of the Party and replace the National Working Committee with a seven-member National Caretaker Committee under the leadership of Senator Ahmed Mohamed Mokarfi as chairman. In a swift reaction, Senator Musa Bello has instead thrown his weight behind Alumodi Sharif. He rather asked that the position of the court be respected by all members of the party. Makaripi cannot lead the party. He does not have the capacity to lead the PDP. It is very, very clear there is no provision of caretaker committee in the PDP constitution. And that is the correct position. And this is the pronouncement of the uh, 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 appeal court in Pata Court. It's either you abide by that or you go to the Supreme Court and wait. The state chairman of the party and the former minister of aviation, Hassan Hayat, expect the Supreme Court to play its role with dispatch on the party's case before it. Democracy is not an issue of PDP. It's an issue for the country. And the Supreme Court is aware of that. Therefore, we are relying on the Supreme Court to handle the issue with dispatch so that things can move uh, smoothly. Before this feud festers further, it's no doubt would be in the best interest of democracy, but an all-inclusive resolution that would factor the benefits of the various faction is reached. Meanwhile, governors of the People's Democratic Party have continued their consultation with a view to resolving the long-standing leadership crisis in the party. 
The latest effort is a visit to former president, Dr. Gulok Jonathan, who earlier had been visited by the Ahmed Bakarfi-led caretaker committee, as well as the national chairman of the PDP, Sali, Senator Ali Modu Sharif. The PDP Governors Forum, led by the AKT State Governor, Ayo Fayoshi, is vehemently opposed to Sharif as the chairman of the party, a dispute that both groups are now looking to the Supreme Court to finally resolve. Members of the People's Democratic Party are not the only ones concerned about resolving the leadership crisis in the party. Many Nigerians who want a virile opposition political party are also unhappy with the current situation. How can the PDP problem be solved? To take a further look at this, I'm now being joined on the News at 10 by a senior lecturer at the Political Science Department of the University of Lagos, Dr. Dili Ashuri. Welcome to the News at 10. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. A pleasure having you here. Thank well, you. you've watched the crisis rocking uh, the PDP, and I'm sure your opinions on, on that are very strong. Do you think it was avoidable, this crisis? Well, the, the crisis is not avoidable. It is not avoidable because if you look at the formation of the PDP and the way it had carried on in government in the last 16 years, you find out that this is a loose coalition of strange political bedfellows, all driven by the calculus of power. In a situation like that, you find some sort of rat race amongst you know the elites within the political party to secure dominance over one another and having lost power in 2015 this crisis is just a fait accompli mm. as it is one faction of the party is headed towards the supreme court um for the final resolution of, of, of the party do you think this will help to resolve the crisis will we finally uh will the pdp finally get some respite you know at yes the well day? if I mean, the aggrieved party goes to the Supreme Court. Of course, the Supreme Court is the final arbiter in cases of this nature. So the pronouncement of the Supreme Court would at least help tell the people and the warring factions who actually hold the ace in the leadership of the PDP. What other options could they have explored to resolving the crisis within the party? Well, there appears to be none because, I mean, these are a group of people driven only by the calculus of power. In all of these squabbles, where is the interest of Nigerians? And it cannot but be so because the nature of our political, uh, the nature of our politics in Nigeria is such that it is zero sum. And because the state is only the large pool where all the politicians, you know, go to take, you recall, the national cake. Everybody wants to take a share of the national cake without bothering how to bake the cake. And because the state offers an unfettered access to that cake, it provides a situation where the winner takes all and the loser loses everything. So, once they are unable to hold on to power they must begin you know to fight themselves to struggle for the jugular the jugular of the political party and that's what we are witnessing in the pdp at the moment when you when you said the word large you reminded me of the pdp which said a few years ago that it was the largest political party in africa do they still occupy that position certainly not mm. with the defeat of the of, of that supposedly largest political party in 2015 and with a large chunk of the backbone of the pdp also now finding solace in the apc the ruling party and many more are still going to leave the pdp so it is doubtful whether the pdp remains the largest political party in, in africa dr Deli asher thank you so much for joining us again tonight on the news at 10. thank you very much and I'll toss it over to my colleague in Abuja, Linda Kigbe, who has more on the news at 10. Hi, Linda. Hello, Amarachi. 
The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says it has recovered some more vehicles and tricycles in a warehouse allegedly belonging to a former Comptroller General of Customs, Abdullahi Diku. In a statement from the head of operations, Kaduna Zonal Office of the Commission, Bapa Ibrahim, the agency explains that the vehicles and other items were recovered from Mr. Inde's property located at Namdia Zikiwe bypass in the state capital. He asked that the recovery was sequel to an intelligence report the commission received that stolen money and properties suspected to be proceeds of crime were being warehoused at the former custom bus's premises. The latest recovery by the EFCC is coming barely one week after the commission recovered 17 vehicles of different brands hidden inside the warehouse, also allegedly belonging to the former controller of customs. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, has challenged police public relations officers to evolve effective dialogue and communication strategies for better understanding between the public and the police. Mr. Idris, who is speaking in Abuja at a forum on addressing public perception and improving the image of the Nigeria police force, asked police officers to conduct themselves in a positive way to enhance the image of the police. We as police officers have to conduct ourselves in a positive way because before you can appreciate us. But it's always important that if we keep quiet and we don't beat our drum, you know, the negative aspects of what some few of us do will subsume the positive. You know, it's just a human nature. You can be doing a good thing, but the day you do a wrong one, people don't even remember what you did in the past. And that's why, you see, we have to be beating our drum on daily basis, you know, on our performance. And this crisis is something that uh, actually increases because of perceptions. And we call it duality of perceptions. You have the perceptions from the public about the police, and you have the perceptions from the police about the public. And this is what fuels a lot of crisis because the two sides have different perceptions about each other. For the government of UK and Nigeria, we work closely together for more than 20 years. We continue to support the Nigerian police force because they are our key ally. And as a Nigerian myself, I'm very proud to be working with the Nigerian police force. Thank you. Wives of Northeast states governors have joined voices to pray for the president's health. They also pledged to work towards tackling the challenges of the region to accelerate its development. In attendance at the prayer event held in Abuja were the wives of the governors of Bronu, Zamfara, Kebi and Nasarawa states, among others. Our correspondent Gloria Mezuki reports. The wives of the northeastern state governors held their first meeting in 2017. To support our spouses. The meeting held behind closed doors discussed various challenges in the north. The specter of drug abuse in the north came high on the list. I think a lot of people in northern Nigeria are not, they don't have enough knowledge about drug, drug abuse and substance. And the problem we're having in northern Nigeria is um, stigma. So people tend to keep quiet. People tend to, you know, just think that it's not really a problem, but really it's a, it's a large problem at heart. It's a killer disease. Everybody in the north has access to a patent store that you, they can just go and buy Benilin from over the counter. So this is a big issue. And unless we work with the lawmakers and they work with us, I don't think we'll succeed. So we're going to solicit their help. We're going to talk to them. We're going to talk to our senators and our members and our representatives in the House of Assemblies and help ask them to help us. We must regularize the patent medical stores if we're going to stop this problem. The investigation into reports of abuse of women and girls in the displaced persons camp might also be yielding results as the wife of Borno State says the menace of rape is being addressed. Yeah, I think now the, the crisis or the situation is now is under control. The state government decided to form a commendable team with the help of police, I think. And when the news at 10 returns, National Peace Corps unveils headquarters in Abuja, awaits signing of empowering law by the president. Join us again.